Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and joining me today at uh, Matrix Surfer Music, where we are all about following the white rabbit down the rabbit hole in search of creativity, uh, originality, and just plain fun. Today's episode is going to be about using your Behringer X32 as a control surface. Now, I got to admit right up front, I am in, totally in love with this board. I've been uh, playing around with music for years and years and years, and uh, it's just the epitome of everything that I ever wanted in a board. And uh, I'm just so thankful to Behringer. Uh, I don't work for them. They don't... Uh, even though I exist, but uh, I sure am a happy customer. Anyway, today we are going to tackle using this X32 as a control surface in the studio. Um, my use of the X32 is in the studio, and so most of what I'm going to be talking about in this and future vi uh, videos is how to use the X32 as a studio machine, production machine. So let's just start off right away. I'll, I I searched and searched for ways to get this to work well with uh, various DAW software, including Reaper and Studio One, and uh, just had very limited success. Uh, sometimes I could get transport controls uh, working and so forth, but I ran across a utility that was created by uh, Patrick Gillis Maylot, and I sure hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. But this is a great, handy little utility. And here's his website. Uh, I'll highlight it there for you. Um, anyway, it is an easy to use. He's created a number of utilities, as you can see. The one that I was interested in is called X32 Reaper Controls. And basically, it's a two-way configuration so that you know, when you move controls on your X32, they respond in uh, the DAW called Reaper, which is a great program, which actually I used um, uh, as my program of preference because it also allows you to do video pretty easily. Anyway, so what you do is you come into the website here, come down and pick the um, program itself, which is, where is it? Oh, download it. He's up to version 1.5 right here. And so you go ahead and download that. Now, I unzipped it to, just as a matter of convenience, to the directory where Reaper itself looks for, um, looks for uh, its in initialization files and OSC files. So you can see that it's in app data, roaming, Reaper, OSC. I also have pictured here, uh, Paul did up a very nice uh, PDF explaining how to use this uh, software that he created. I, the reason I made the video is, and this is very, very in-depth and he has a lot of great suggestions, uh, so I highly suggest reading through it uh, to see um, the way that Patrick uh, en envisions doing things, but I did the video because I'm just visual, and it's easier for me when I can click on a video and follow along. So hopefully this is helpful for you in that way too. So here we are back in Reaper, and we've downloaded uh, Patrick's fantastic little uh, utility, and uh, again, much gratitude to you, Patrick. So we're going to go down to Options, Preferences, and going to go to control surfaces. Now you can see I already have the Behringer set up, but what you are going to want to do is go to add, and you're going to pick a control surface mode, and in this case, you are going to go to open sound control. Now you notice it's blank. That's because we got to put in a configuration file, and that is what Patrick has created for us called X32. I just left it the same name. And it easily finds this because you remember we put these files in Reaper's OSC where it looks for its OSC files. So anyway, we're going to load up that. We're going to give it the name X32. And we're going to click OK. And then what I want to talk about next is how you configure this. 
And this is kind of the big key for getting it right. Uh, it, it took me, I'm embarrassed to tell you how long it took me. And it was mainly because uh, it was, despite the very clear instructions, I had one number typed wrong in one of these IPs. And it wouldn't work and wouldn't work. And it was, I just dumbassed it. So anyway, that's, that's the thing to watch out for. Uh, one of the things to watch out for. I went ahead and picked receive on port 127, send to port 125. The host IP is, Reaper's going to pick that up off of your computer. And basically, you just repeat it down here with device IP. Patrick uh, suggests that you can vary these sizes. Uh, I think he said between weight between packets, he's, he's tested up to 10. Um, I have went through the various uh, milliseconds and really didn't see a whole lot of difference for me from one to the next. So now you've got yourself set up here. And um, you're going to go the next to the, um, we're going to go next to track control panels. Because yeah, we need to make another adjustment here. Now I changed the meter value for my Reaper meters to try to more closely match the X32. So I went to minus 70 dB and plus 10 dB. And then Patrick suggests using a volume fader range of minus 90 to plus 12. And I just leave that set at the, the max precision just set at the default. So now you should be ready to go here. And the next thing that you're going to do is you are going to go and click on your X32 program wherever you put it. I put it in my taskbar. And we're going to pop it up there. Okay. And so there we are. Now, um, it's going to come up unconnected. But I just want to go over, again, in Reaper, the settings in Reaper versus the settings in this program. So again, let me bring up those, uh, let me bring up those settings for you. And, and you can just compare them side by side here. I think it's just easier to... Again, visualize how this needs to be set up. Oops, there we go. Okay, and now we'll bring this picture back, and there we go. So now you can see that in while whereas in Reaper you've got both IPs set identically, here you're going to want to pick off the IP that is that your Behringer is hooked up to, and again, this presumes that you're using an Ethernet connection for your computer. And so there, you pick that off. Mine's uh, obviously 192.168.05. And then there's the Reaper host number. And it repeats the send to port and the receive on port just as they're typed in here. Now, the, the cool thing is that Patrick has also given you a lot of flexibility in terms of where the MIDI is going to communicate. You can, you can map in the auxiliaries. You can map in the buses. And uh, the DCAs, the effects, very, very cool. Um, so that, that, that you can use those all to control your DAW. So anyway, you, once you've got this set the way that you want it, you're going to click Save, and it saves that configuration for you. So there we are. And I can close this out now. And we're going to be up and running. Boom. There we are. We're running. So now the cool thing is, let me switch scenes here for you. And what you're going to be able to see is that as I move the faders on the X32, so at the end of the last scene, I'm wanting to show you how cool it is so that you can see both of these movements, the, the Behringer's X32's faders moving along with Reaper, and I'm going, what the, what, I had that working, oh yeah, my Reaper banks are on 17 through 32, so anyway, here you go, here's your fader moving in the Behringer, and you can see it seamlessly moving on Reaper, one of the things I noticed, if you push this too fast, it, it kind of catches a little bit, so you kind of, you got to be gentle, you got to be kind of subtle with it, not quite sure, you know, maybe that's something that, uh, one of you folks can figure out, you know, tweaking various parameters and so forth. But you got fader movement here. You can go up here and you can watch the, the pan control moving there on channel four. And so anyway, let's do a, a live demo of this, shall we? What I am going to do here is just, I want to bring up a couple of 
of uh, volumes on some guitar tracks that I have. So I've gone into the track and envelope and I've clicked on volume and clicked on right. And that's for the left channel. And you notice that it's over here. And so I'm going to pan this back over to, uh, let's see here. There you go. And I'm going to pan this one right. Let me just start those that way. Okay, and the same thing on the other track. Uh, go in, click on volume. Uh, um, I guess we can, no, I don't want to do pan. So I'm just going to do volume and right, and bang, we're ready to go. Awesome. We're going to run this. You know, it says the MIDI inputs couldn't be open, but it's, it's freaking lying, man, because you can see it working. Bring this down a little bit so it's not drowning out the voice. the idea that is just uh, I can't tell you how fun it is and exciting just makes me want to come in and work on these projects so anyway that's the today's video and I uh, hope you got a kick out of it hope you found something useful love to have your suggestions your feedback how can I make these videos better for you um, and uh, ideas for new videos that you'd like to see uh, anyway thanks again for joining me Go out and make beautiful music.